Today may be the final day in getting all these panels to fit my wrecked car. I'm talking about swap meet parts like doors, fenders, hoods, deck lids, all coming together on a wrecked tub to build the foundation of what is yet to come. Today is huge. time. Buying a wreck tub like this is generally not a good idea and it's not for everybody but if you are a DIYer like my like myself then this can be a great way to get into a classic car for a lot less money and enjoy the work as you go. That's what this channel is all about. It's about inspiring you to build your dream car. Thank you for following me and my restoration journey on this project. If you're new to this channel please consider subscribing now. Just click the button below and thank you very much. All right, I have a clean workbench for a change, which is awesome. So let's get started. I had to put a little relief cut right here in order to get this gap in the front even. This piece here was just unmovable because of the way it had a corner in it. So unfortunately I had to, to cut this. I'm gonna TIG weld it, get the paint off here. I'm gonna TIG weld it and you, it'll, you'll never know. I'm able to get to the back side of this part because um, when I take the door off, I can treat the inside for, uh, for rust using epoxy primer and some top coat. Okay, here's that relief cut and it's, it's collapsed down to where now I can come back and weld this. This is the gap I wanted. I got an even gap all the way along the bottom of the door. Woohoo! Okay, now I'm gonna take the door off so I can access this bottom here for welding. But before I do, I just wanna take a picture of sort of where I need to add material to the door because I'm gonna do that at the same time. So right up to here, this is good. This is, um, this is three, four millimeters it only starts to deviate right here at this corner. So from here till about here, I'm going to be adding lead. So I'm gonna put that on there with a Sharpie and also reference this video if I need to go back and, and look at where I was. I'm just adding a small weld bead just forward of the same section I did last week. Alrighty, I got the door off the car and I'm getting ready to strip the paint off this front uh, leading edge here so I can do some leading. Um, but one thing I wanted to show you is that this has been stripped along the bottom and there is a little bit of rust. So if you look really closely, I've cleaned out these rust pits. They're very tiny. But uh, this is kind of a deep rust pit. This is where the skin hems over and it's double-sided here. So what I'm gonna do is use the TIG welder and kind of fill up these little craters. Now I've cleaned them out really well with a um, wire brush on the uh, angle grinder and also my pneumatic um, wire brush. So I'm going to try to weld these. Okay, I tried to show you the uh, shots under the welding helmet, and this is the result of filling up those two pits with, with filler rod. 
So I'm gonna go over this with a, uh, you know, my, my cutoff tool, just to grind it down a little bit. And then finally my um, angle grinder with some 80 grit. And this should come uh, back to just flat metal. So there you go. That's just another uh, advantage of TIG welding. It's got a lot of versatility. You could definitely do, you know, thin stuff. But this works for me, so let's move on. Okay, here's the result of what I did down here in the bottom. Remember, I, I slit this with the uh, cutoff wheel, and then I just welded that back together. This has already been ground smooth, and um, this is finished. There was also a little crack right here. I don't know if I have a before picture. I'll have to look in the video. But I, I fixed the crack, and um, we have a pretty tight gap here. Still need to do a little body work to the, to, the, to the fender, but this joint right here is looking really nice. Okay, the reason I took the door off to begin with uh, was to clean off the paint and do the leading on this leading edge. Hopefully there's enough material on here. I mean, definitely needs to be filed down, but hopefully after filing, this will uh, get that gap we want towards the front. Okay, as you can see, the door is now on the car and um, this is looking pretty good. So it's an erratic um, gap here, but it's much tighter. So this is gonna work out really nice as it comes down so right here it's actually binding and touching so I got a little too much down low but everything else looks to be pretty nice let me get my gap checker okay, here's the three millimeter tool and it won't go in which is great it will go in right there this is about four to five so no go almost right there goes right here this is three this is about four And then everything from here down is, uh, is very tight. So I'm gonna start filing this and making it more even so we can get a consistent gap. All right, after just a little bit of filing, this gap is looking really nice. This is uh, three millimeters, maybe a little bit less on this um, upper arched area, but it is looking uh, pretty good. And from the side view, profile, you know, going down is, is, is really nice. There's a little bit of a kind of caved in area down here. So I'm gonna take the door off. I'm gonna do a little more filing here on the lead, but trying to remove this kind of caved in portion and also this dent here on the fender. And then this side will be done. I'm using a paintless dent tool to massage out a dent in the rocker panel here. Okay, the hacksaw blade does a good job defining the gap, but it can only go down so deep. So now I'm gonna take care of all this lower stuff while the door is off and just tidy up this edge so that it can be painted later on. Now I have a driver's door that fits and a passenger door and a deck lid 
and a hoof. Well, the workbench was clean. Ugh. Okay, I've repositioned the car so I can get access to the front. I want to revisit this section where the grill and the turn signals meet the bumper. Because when I did the back date on this fender and I was doing so on the bench, I realized that there was a large gap here between the grill and the turn signal lens. And I thought I would address it before paint. And so the time is now. I want to get this done this week. So I'm going to put the bumper on now and uh, try to line everything up. It's probably going to require some cutting. All right, so here's the issue I'm having with this side. The grill either lines up with the top of the fender and has a nice gap across the front like this, or it lines up with the horizontal line in the bumper like this, but then it leaves a large gap here at the top. Okay, all I've done here is I've just cut that um, corner where the turn signal box is attached to the fender and it's really relaxed everything to allow things to fit horizontal I mean this is just how I want it so now I'm dealt I'm dealing with the um, you know empty space there at the top where I cut it I need to fill that up and I'm also dealing with I think you can see over here this gap right here just got a little bit tighter only because the grill is rotated horizontal again so I'm probably gonna have to tune up this leading uh, the or this edge here on the side I'm gonna to have to tune that up a little bit as well to get the gap back. Okay, I have this uh, sort of arbitrary strip here cut out and I'm tacking it in place and kind of cutting and forming it as I go. So uh, this is really flexible. I'm just wrapping it around, filling up the gap and welding from both sides. Here's where it gets too narrow. I'm gonna to have to take my time just filling up that hole but it's doable, just, uh, you know, welding, welding, welding. Okay, here's a quick progress check. I put the lens back in, just to make sure that the um, spacing and the horizontal position is right. So as you can see behind me and in this video, things are just now starting to line up, which is a great sign. You know, this was once an abandoned project, left in the Nevada desert, nobody wanted it, people parted it out. Now it has just a little glimmer of hope. It's starting to look like a car again, and it's on its way up. So my method, the DIY method, is a trade-off. There's typically three things. You can have quick, high quality and cheap. So you can only kind of pick two. My method is definitely the high quality. I tried to do it as best I can and cheap. So, um, you know, you can pay someone to do this kind of work, but it would be very cost prohibitive, which is why I started this video by saying it's generally not recommended to buy a strip shell like this and try to bring it back to life. Um, the heavy lifting is, is now done, meaning this is a strong foundation to start building this thing up. Also, in addition to getting this thing shape, ship shape for the road again, we've done a lot of modifications. This is somewhere between an RS clone and kind of an outlaw. So the modifications to backdate this to a 73 were also a big portion of the time. And like I mentioned early in, the, in, in this uh, video series, these cars can be purchased for a lot less money than a 73. And the work that I've done here to make it look like a 73 to some degree of quality is gonna pay off big. All right, here's the final alignment of the turn signal and horn grill and metal finishing around that top edge that was spliced in. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it was worth it. So don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment below if you uh, like what you see here. Have a good weekend. See you next week.